Hello dear students, in this video we are going to see how to design a user interface like this to manage the student inf information. Uh, so here what we I have did it, this is a GUI and I have a database to populate uh, uh, this table and also to store data in the database, MySQL database I have used and also I have a class which maintain the data about the student. So to maintain the student information uh, easily, I'm going to uh, use MVC, Model View Controller, which help us to design any application manageable, easier to manage. Because if I want to design such application, which uh, involves uh, uh, like design, and then we have uh, uh, data, and then I have a database, if I want to manage all the things and if I want to write everything in a single Java program, it is very difficult to manage. So when we use a model web controller, it will be helpful for us to manage our application in a simpler and easier way. So what is this uh, uh, application is about? For example, this is the data which is available in the database. Uh, in the previous video, uh, uh, I will give it in the description box in which I have uh, explained how to design this kind of GUI and all using Java Swing. Also, I have explained how to connect to database, how to do insertion, updation, deletion, and selecting the data from the database. So you can refer that so that you can uh, know everything in detail. Then you come and listen to it. It will be easy for you uh, to understand. So here, if you see my MySQL, this is my table here I have. Uh, database called sample. Under the sample database, I have a table student. And here, this are the data which I have stored. Here, I have four columns, register number, name, mark one, and mark two. It can be here I have gave, taken mark one as Java and mark two as Python. So this table, I'm going to take it uh, in this. I have uh, taken it here. And then uh, we can do uh, insertion, updation, deletion. I'll show the demo what we are going to design. Uh, for example, I'm going to enter a new entry. So let me give one and five as the register number. And let me give the name as John. And let the mark be 90 and 99. So you can see there is no entry called 115. I'm going to insert it. So it says insertion, inserted successfully. I go OK. And you can see here this new record is inserted here. Okay. And then uh, you can also uh, update it. For example, uh, for the register number 115, instead of um, Java mark is 90, I'm going to change it as 96. So I'm going to give update. So it says updated successfully. And you can say the mark has been updated. Uh, similarly, if I want to delete it, I'm going to delete based on the register number. So I'm going to delete, uh, let us say, delete 114. So, uh, and, uh, so I'm going to mainly take this register number based on that only I'm going to delete. So I'm not going to update anything. So if I delete it, you can say 114 record is now deleted. Uh, so also what I have did is I have populated the uh, names available in the database in this combo box. So here, uh, if I want to display only Daniel's record, so I'll just say Daniel. So only Daniel's record will be uh, displayed. For example, if I want only Arthi's record, then I, uh, if I choose Arthi, only Arthi's record will be displayed. So when I say display, it will uh, take all the entries from the database. So if I see my show my database, so this is my database, okay? Uh, table with uh, all this entry, whatever we have here uh, is in the database. You can see Arti, Bala, Daniel, and John is available. So all this is populated in this J table. So let me explain this now for you. So before that, let me tell you what is this MVC. So MVC. So generally in an industry, when they develop uh, bigger applications, they choose this model. This is a design for pattern to design any application or uh, software. It's a design pattern. So what does it do is model. Model says about the data. So all the necessary data of our application we will keep inside the model. And what does this V means? It is the presentation layer. So presentation means what? So here, this is our presentation, this window, this GUI is our presentation. So you can keep all the code related to the presentation inside this view. And what is a controller? 
controller will communicate between this model and the presentation. So between EM and UV. So between the data and between the design, which that is our interface, right? So, so it will communicate between this two. So this is about MVC. So when we segregate our code as model separately, weave separately and control separately, it is very easy for us to manage. So let us go one by one how I have designed it so that it will be easy for you to design it for any application. So let us move. Uh, first, I'm going to show you. So here you can see this is my Java project. Under the Java project, I have created some three packages. So first one, uh, I said MVC. So for model, I have separately created a package called student model. And uh, for view, that is the presentation, the design, GUI design, for that I have created a separate uh, uh, package where I have a uh, Java class in it. And then for controlling, uh, to communicate, taking the data uh, from the design and uh, uh, doing any kind of um, communication or any functionality that we can do here, controlling with the data and the presentation, you can do here. So for that, I have created a package student controller where I have these two classes. I'll explain you one by one. So let's start with a model, okay, student. So for this, uh, we have a class called student uh, class. So I said in the MVC, we have th three things. One is first is data. So here I have showed you uh, an application which maintain the uh, student information. So all the information data about the student I have kept here. So student means what are the information? There may be a number of information about the student. As of now, I have taken only three. Um, so I have taken the name, which is number Java marks and uh, maths. And then uh, here I have <coughs> two constructors. Uh, so constructor overloading, one a default constructor and the one is parametrics constructor. So here I'm getting all the data about this uh, student and I'm initializing this here. So also, you know, in Java, there is also a provision here called um, getter and setter method. So either you can initialize the data member of the class using constructor or you can able to assign data and retrieve data using getter and setter method. So here you can see I have not mentioned anything. So uh, this uh, Eclipse, I have used uh, the Eclipse IDE. So here we have a provision if you go to source and here it is us, uh, helping us to generate getter and setter. So if I say generate getter and setter, so what are the different data available for the student here we have taken is uh, name, register number and the two subject marks. So I'm going to select that for all this data I'm going to make a getter and setter. So if we view generate, automatically see here all the function automatically came. So for getting the name, um, we have get name and uh, getting name it's to help us to display. Setting means it will assign the data. So it will getting the name and it will assign to this and then it will help us to retrieve the name back. So similarly for next uh, data, what is the next thing we have? Register number. For the register number automatically it created a getter method and setter method. So get to display it, uh, set to assign it. Similarly, for all the data members, it has created uh, the getter and setter. So it's up to you, up to your convenience. You can either go for getter and setter or you can use a constructor. So here I am co mainly concentrating or uh, doing with the help of the constructor, I'll show you. So this is about the model that is our data part. So here I have given what are the data I'm going to use for the application is completely given here in this uh, under the model uh, student model package I have a class student where I have given all these details. What is the next thing we have here is uh, V that is uh, V. So it speaks about the presentation. So what is the presentation? This is our presentation. So let's discuss on it. So if you see uh, uh, this is the GUI class which I have student uh, uh, GUI.java. So here I have designed this program. Uh, here I have used to design this interface. So what are things here I need to design it? So here you can see there are uh, four label box here and here is again a label box. And here I have four text fields and I have four button and I have a combo box. Here I have a J table, which I have kept the J table inside the scroll. Okay, scroll pan. What is scroll pan? When uh, the table became large, 
it will help us to automatically give the scroll bar. Otherwise, we cannot see the rest of the thing. Here we have only four entries. When I when my table grow, uh, it will be difficult for us to see all the entries. So when we have a scroll, we can easily see all the data. So for that, I have kept the J table inside the uh, scroll pan. I'll show you one by one. So this is our design and the components which we require. So what I have is first I have the label box. So what are the label box I have? I need is five label boxes. One is to get the register number, name, mark one, mark two, and to uh, search by uh, name. So here I have all this register number, name. So I have given some meaningful name so that easily I can remember those things. And the next thing is text field, right? So these are the text field. I have four text field. So I have four things. Register number, name. I have just started with the T. So it uh, says that it is a text field to get the register number, name, mark one and mark two. Next thing, if you see here, I have some four button. For this four button, I have created uh, for the reference. Next is I have, I need a table. So this is the J table. So for that, I have created a reference. And I said that I am going to keep the J table inside the scroll pan. So for that, I have created a scroll uh, pan uh, reference here. And then here, if you see, I have a combo box. This drop down is called as combo box. So for that, I have uh, J combo here. And then uh, here we have a class in Java called default table model. What is the use of this G, uh, default table model is to manage the J table uh, easily to add record, to delete record in an easier manner. We are going to use default table model. Okay, so that will help us to easily manage this J table. And then uh, here I have created a string array to give the names of this table. So here you can see this is the column name, right? So this column name I have given inside this string array. And uh, then uh, this is the uh, reference I have created for this class, which is the controller. I'll be, uh, go there. So here inside the constructor, so you know that always uh, the entry point of any Java program is the main function. So inside uh, here, you can see I have a main function here, uh, which calls the constructor here. You know, whenever I create an object, it calls the constructor. So when the program starts, it comes to the constructor. So this is the constructor of this class. So student GUI. So where I have defined all the components. So already if you have listened the previous videos about how to create a GUI using Java Swing, you can understand. So I have created all the labels uh, with the name. And here I have created all the text field. And here this is all about button. Uh, and here, this is very important, as I told, to make our J, J table com, uh, use, um, to use it comfortably, we are going to use default table model, so I have defined it, and to that uh, default, using this day, J, uh, default table model only, we are going to uh, enter data and remove data, all these things. So here I have set the column identifier uh, for this. Uh, the column names are already available inside this uh, string array. So that I have given as the uh, column identifier, which means the header of the table. And then I have created a table, a J table. To this J table, I have set the model. What is the model I have used? The default table model. And the object I have used for this model. So I have given that as a parameter here. Finally, this table is given inside the J scroll pan. So that will help us, as I told you earlier, when the table records increase, it will help us to give the scrolling scroller whether you can have it horizontally or vertically. Then here, for this uh, GUI, I'm going to use uh, uh, layout as null, and uh, so that only I can e comfortably place it in the right place. If I make a flow layout, then it will come here and there. To avoid this, I have manually uh, set the bounds for each and everything. Here, I have given the bounds for all the labels. So this is what the x-axis, this is y-axis, the width of this label box, and the height of this. Similarly, for all. And then for all this label box, I have set the font as uh, font family is Cambria, uh, it's coming in the bold and the font size is 20. So this is how we got and also I have given for all the uh, labels, I have given the color as blue so you can see all it coming as blue. And then similarly for the text boxes, I have given all this uh, font. Also for the text boxes, I have given the color as green. So that's why you can see whatever I type here is coming in green color. So that's the reason because I have given the foreground color as green. 
and for the buttons also I have placed in the right place by using x axis, y axis, uh, width and the height. And then for the buttons also I have given uh, the font. You can see I have given blue color and also I have neatly arranged it. Uh, so then also uh, here, what is this uh, scroll? I have given the scroll pan. No? So inside the scroll pan only I have kept the table. So I'm just going to say where to place the scroll because autumn already you can see here under the scroll only I have kept the table. So when I place the scroll pan in the right place, automatically table will also be coming inside. So I just put the scroll uh, in the right place where I want by giving the x axis y axis. Okay, and then this is what uh, we have for the one second. So this is what we have uh, for the L search. That is the label. So this is what the L label for the search. So and uh, for that also I have given the position. And then what does this load means? Why uh, when I create an object for the class, automatic constructor only load. So while I run the program at that time itself, the data in this table should be populated from the database. So this is the database, whatever data already available in the database should be populated while I uh, called it for first time itself. So for that, I have written my own function load. I will uh, tell you what is uh, inside the load. So I have uh, written the load function inside this here, here itself. So let me show this load. This is what the load function. What I have did is initially when I load it, if some data is already available there, remove all the roads. So what is model? So I said model is an object we have created for this default table. So this is what we have already show you. This is the default table model, which helps us to easily manage data. Uh, J table. So I'm going to use this model object to do all the operations in the table. So here I said set row count as zero. So I'm going to remove all the available rows there first. And then, uh, so if you have already watched my database connectivity, then you know all this. So I'm not going to repeat everything here. Uh, uh, so I'll say one and rest you can understand if you have listened to the previous video. It is very easy. So what I did is I have written the courier select star from student because I'm going to take the entire table. Star means all, okay? I'm going to take all the records from the student table, which is available here, okay? All the records. And then here, um, uh, this is to connect to the database. To connect to the database, every time uh, to create a con uh, connection object there, to give separately what is the username, password, URL, every time I want to repeat it. So in order to avoid it, what I did it, I have written a separate class for it. Okay, this is a separate class, only to have the database connectivity information. So in this class, I have given this records as my uh, data okay member function so here i have given what is the url to connect to the database what is the username what is the password and also i have created reference so inside the constructor uh, so you know sorry here i have created a function separately and i have created a connection object using the driver manager so since we know this connection as an interface so for the connection, we cannot directly get an object. So using this driver manager class, using this function, I'm going to give all this detail. So this is what the line uh, which help us to make a connection with the database because now we want to connect Java with the database. So to connect it, we have all this uh, JDBC driver. Already I have explained what is the purpose of JDBC in the previous video, which help us to communicate between Java and the database. Here we have used MySQL database. You can go for any database. So if you go to other databases, you have to give the particular database name here. Otherwise, then you can give the local host uh, and its port number and the database name. And using that, we have just connected it and I have the connection object. So this connection object only I'm going to receive here. So I'm calling class name since it is a um, uh, static function. I can just call it with the name. Uh, class name itself. So that is why I made all of them as uh, static. So here I just use the class name dot name of this function is what um, function connect, right? This is the uh, just the name which I have given for it. So you can give any name. So using that, I'm just getting the connection object I'm getting here. So now this connection object, which I'm returning here, help us to connect to the database. So every time I don't want to rewrite all the steps in all of this function. So it is very easy. Just writing only one line will help us the, to get the connection object. So that is why we have written here. Then we know what is the uh, purpose of this prepare statement, which will help us to, uh, this, which is an interface, which help us to execute our query uh, inside the database. 
So for that, I have this, uh, sorry, prepare statement is a class. It's not an interface. So prepare statement is a class. Using this object, we can able to execute our query. I'm so sorry. Prepare statement is not a class. It's a uh, interface and which help us to um, uh, execute our query in the database. I'm sorry for that. And then uh, using this prepare statement object, uh, we are going to execute our query. If it is a select statements, then we have to use uh, execute query. If it is a insertion or deletion or update, then we have to give execute update function here. Otherwise, it is very simple. And then as I told you already, uh, this result set uh, will have the complete table within it. So we have to initially, uh, the pointer will be, uh, as I told you previously, the pointer will be here in this place. So if you want to move to the next next record, we have to use r.next. So, uh, I'm going to first in the table, if you see, I have an integer value for its number, then string, then mark one and mark two are the uh, integers. So first I'm going to get the integer in the first row, then the string in the second row, then third and fourth are the integer. So this is the get int get string function, which is already available in this result set. Uh, so it is very easy to access those function using this RS object. Now, uh, after I get all the information about the register number name, mark one and mark two, I can update this data. So what is this model? This is the model is an object name we have given for this default uh, table model, right? So to this model, so to this model, we can able to easily add one one record. So I'm going to read this table one by one by row by row, and I'm going to add this row by row value inside this table with the help of this default model and uh, table. Okay, so that is why using this model, I'm going to add it. So here you can see here, hmm, I have used model dot add row. So easily it will help us to add and remove. So add row, I'm going to make this a array. So here I have created an object for object array. And, and then I'm inserting all these values. Okay, rest a number, name, mark one and mark two. So likewise, until there is some data inside this table, all these records will be added inside this J table with the help of default uh, table model, okay? So this is what the table and uh, the load. And then here, uh, you can see here also, while I start my uh, application itself, this uh, drop down box, that is a combo box, get updated with all the values here in the database, right? So for that, what I have did is, I'm going to call a function called load combo, which is available in the controller. So I will show you the controller data access object I have used for it. So here, what does it do is load combo. Now here, I have used a vector class object. So it is like an array where we can dynamically add and remove data inside the vector. So that is the uh, fantastic use of this vector. Okay, so we can, uh, we don't want to constrain our array with a certain specific size. You can dynamically add and remove values in it. So I have used this vector for that. Then what I, as usual, I'm going to take uh, only the name. Earlier I have used select star, which means take all the records. So here I have specifically specified, uh, take only the name column from the table because inside this combo, we are just displaying only the names. So I have taken the name, then using the connect, this here I have created a connection object as I explained earlier, then propose a statement everything, then using security query we are executing and getting the table, which will contain only the name column now. Then I'm going to access it one by one and uh, getting that value in a string variable then. And then what is V inside this array, I'm going to add it. It's like an array I told you, right? It's a collection of uh, data. So every time I get it, I can automatically dynamically increase the size of this vector also. So every time I ask my have, I have record in this database, it will be reading all the name and it will be uh, dynamically, we can add all this value to this vector. Finally, after I read all the name from the table student, I'm going to return this vector. 
okay and you know that uh, this all the connections object of data uh, base are a check the exception so we have to handle it so i have kept everything inside the track catch finally i have written this vector which contain all the names so that is what we are receiving here since it is a returning a vector object i am getting and calling that using the object of this class st so here you can see i have created an object for this class using that i have defined it also here and then i have using that object we are going to call the load which will return a vector i have stored it now that i am going to put inside uh, load it inside the combo box so we won't contain all the name right so that will be the data for our combo box so now all the names will be loaded here and then uh, you can set the position for this combo and you know all this thing i have explained in swing gui adding all the components so as i told you here earlier whenever you create any component you have to place it in the frame and then you have to make a connection between the listener functions as well i hope you have listened to the previous videos so for that first i have added all this so that will help us to place the component inside the board after doing that we have to do this wiring between the functionality so that is what done in uh, this part so every table present here so this are the table and also for this also i have add some event so when i click on it you can see when i click bala bala record alone is displaying here so i have given that for it so if i give daniel daniel alone will be uh, displaying so i have given some event for that as well for all the uh, tables i have given add listener so you can see here i have implemented action listener hmm, to this class and then for this drop down i have used item listener okay so bala uh, if i add jasmine i'll get the jasmine record uh, okay the jasmine record may not be there it might have deleted so it is taking all the records so for that i have taken item listener so i have uh, made a proper uh, listener to each of this component and then as usual we are setting the title to our window as student information uh, management i have given the width and height by using this set size making it visible no layout because we have given the position where it to be placed if i close the window you have to terminate the uh, program so i have used this then uh, now when i uh, now, now let us see this activity right so when i click on this the wiring is already done with the help of this code this one do the wiring so when i click on this we read button what should happen when i click on this update um, button what should happen when i click on this insert what should happen so that functionality you have to return inside this action perform which is the one of the function only one uh, step function present inside the action listener so then we are going to say if the event created is because of this read this is a uh, because of this uh, read this display uh, button so if it's so then i'm calling the load function load function i have already explained so that will happen so when i click on this display it will take all the record from the database and it will display so i have already explained it about the uh, load and then if it is an update button what you have to do um, you have to uh, read all the values from this text field so already i have explained it and then um, i am passing all this value to this uh, constructor so here we know this is the constructor which is receiving all the values so this is the data data is available separately this is the design part this is available separately this is how it will help us to easily manage if i want to do any changes in the data i can directly go and do it here if i want to do any changes in the design part i can do it here okay what is uh, then i so that this object is now updated and then using this update db function which is available in the controller controller only i said it will help us to uh, communicate between the data and the controller so update data do the same as usual uh, which i have explained in the database connectivity program which um, uh, this is the query and this is the connection object using the connection object prepare statements interface with the help of this uh, function help us to execute the query and for all this question mark i have given what is the data for it i hope you have listened to the database connectivity video and then it is uh, then using execute update it will help us to execute this query and if the updation happens it will return the number of rows affected because of it so if the value is equal to equal to one then it happens so then i'll say okay it says updated successfully i have bring a, 
uh, dialog box which shows the information message says updated successfully if not it will show no uh, such register number available so that is what happens here it's called the uh, update function which is available in this class so i have uh, made this as a static class so with the help of the class name i can call it so i called it after i do the updation the updated value should be again loaded in the table right so once again i am calling this load function which i have showed you already so this is what happened and you can see what is i have commanded here i have used the constructor to initialize the object of this class what is the other way i told you can also use this getter and setter functions right so that is what only i have used here i have just commanded because i am not using it you can also do in this way also what i did is for this student object you can create as for the student object you can make it in a create object here and then you can say s yes, dot set register number what is set register number you can have a uh, set register number which help us to get the register number and assign to the object or, or the data member of this class so uh, so set register number because register number is a integer getting the data from the text box convert to integer and assign to the object's register number then set name uh, set java everything i am getting if it is a string directly you can put if it is a uh, integer then make the string to integer then uh, assign it so this getter and setter also help us to assign the data to the data members of the class so here i have used a constructor if you want to use a getter and setter you can use this and then you can update similarly same thing i have did for the insertion so if the insert button is click if the insert button is click you have to take the record from here so you can see if i click insert it says insert successfully then this record is inserted right so that's what happened here so it first take all the record put it in this object and then i am creating uh, assigning all this uh, register number name mark1 mark2 to the student object so it will call the constructor and this uh, data members got initialized and using this object i am going to insert it so who is the controller uh, which connects the uh, design this is the design and the uh, model right the, where we have the data so i am going to call the method uh, insert method available here so this is the insert method which gets the student object so that is why we are passing this student object yes to this insert function available in the controller this is the uh, class we have written java program we have written for controller so which communicates it between the we are communicating between this design as well as with this uh, class so that is what the controller and it does the functionality for us or uh, the job we assign to it so first we are uh, writing the query to insert getting the connection of database using prefer statement we are going to execute the query and we are getting the four values for it from the student object so that is why here i said yes dot register number get it from this object which is passed from here here we have uh, given this student object to this function as an argument it is received here so from this object i am taking the register number to this question mark name to the second question mark so that is what the number okay 1 2 3 so using the ps dot setting set string then set in we have assigned the object and then we are uh, executing this ps dot execute update will execute the query so if it is properly inserted we will get one so then we will say okay properly executed that is why we might have seen if i say insert uh, it's once again no repeating so i have given the uh, i will make it as uh, seven okay so then i'll insert so you can say insert inserted successfully and it is inserted so that is what it is if it is n then say inserted successfully this is the dialog box for it and uh, similarly uh, for the deletion as well so this is the if the button click this a delete button same thing i'm getting the record i'm initializing the object calling the uh, this uh, model right model means where we have the data and we are initializing and then that object is sent to the controller to do to do the job that is what the controller communicate between the gui and our data model and then uh, this is calling the delete after i do the delete it once again update the table so that is what it and here uh, we can see the delete table same thing getting the student object writing the query based on the register number i am going to delete it executing the query if it is updated then we can say it is properly updated uh, so the xps dot execute will return the number of rows updated 
okay and then if it is one then we can know okay it is updated so then based on it uh, you can load it uh, we can see for example if i want to remove this 117 which is there if i give delete it says delete successfully because such data is there and it's got deleted if i give some other uh, register which is not there and if i give it says no such register number so that is why we have given here in the else part of the delete here in the controller so in the else part we can given no such register number so this is how we have designed this part so hope you have understand i'll just go through it this is the class where we have all this so which is the model see here for the model we have the student class just having only the data about the class either go only by this control uh, constructor or you can go by your getter setter and then what is the second thing we we was the this gui design part so here a necessary uh, header files are there so for event handling we have uh, under awt we have events for sql functionality we have this vector is here for swing we have all the necessary packages and then uh, based on the previous videos you can understand all the design part is done and when i click on the corresponding uh, button uh, if the button is this or this what to do is run here and here we are calling the controller and in the controller this is another normal class where we have written all the function for what to do for insert by connecting your model and your view and here we have uh, did for update we have did for delete and also this is to load our combo box so this is all about uh, designing a small window based application with the help of java swing also we have taken the data for this uh, uh, design from the database so we have designed it with the mpc model model we control is a design pattern to manage our application in a easier manner hope you have got it uh, thank you god bless you